Now we'll get set for the face-off. Villanova wearing navy. The looks like dark purple and gold numbers for Drexel in the circle. And the fight for the ball will be won by the Dragons. And they'll start out with the first possession. It got loose again, but they stay on top of it. And they'll bring it up the field. Late inside, the shot goes wide, and Drexel may have been able to get on board to start the game, but good defense there from Villanova to cut down the lane. Yeah, face-offs between these two teams, neither really standing out. Um, so that's going to be just a battle we continue to watch today. But I like the take from uh, Kevin O'Brien, the long stick biddy for Drexel. So it certainly will be interesting. Not a whole difference for whatever side's the strongest on the face-offs throughout the year. You just mentioned they were pretty even. It'll be the battle of a strong offense against a strong defense. And it's the offense that starts with the opening goal. Up close, Drexel lead 1-0. Just a beautiful set piece on an opener here from Drexel. And of course, it's Max Semple, number 88, the Canadian sniper on that lefty wing. Just enough to muscle it past the Villanova goalkeeper early. Great start for Drexel. It certainly is at Semple's ninth of the season. And now back in the circle. Fight for the faceoff. The Dragon's going to win it again. But as the ball gets loose, Villanova get on top of it. And I'll say that's definitely a crucial ball to win for the Wildcats after conceding. They don't want to give Drexel another attack. Yep, we'll see what Villanova has. If they settle in here, get their midfielders on. Bring it down the right. Begin to play it from behind. They bring it inside quickly. And that is exactly what they needed. Real, keeping it real, to respond to make it 1-1. Keeping it real, and he's flexing as he comes off the field. Obviously going right into the invert there out of the box. I like, it looks like we're going to maybe flash back to that first Drexel goal. Yeah, we didn't, get, we didn't yeah. get the replay before. And I think we'll probably follow it up with this Wildcats goal after the replay, but... A well-taken shot, but I think that real goal was even better. And now the face-off will be won by... It's going to go the way of the Wildcats after the ball had gotten loose. But indeed, great goal from Drexel, but an even realer response from Real, coming off a career-high six points with his first to start us off. Now Villanova attacking from the opposite side. Shot goes wayward and it'll stay with the Wildcats. Really nice pace here from, from both ends of the field. I like the way these offenses are just attacking. You know, I think that the introduction of the shot clock into college lacrosse has made this sport so much more exciting. And you can tell both teams just attacking right off the bat. Looks like we're hung up here. Now plays up close, scores again. And after conceding early, two quick responses from Villanova, and this time it's Lakata with his 11th of the season. Lakata, such a sneaky ex attackman. I actually, our staff, when I was coaching at the University of Utah, Utah we recruited Matt uh, for reasons like this gets his defender hung up and then just super nifty footwork on the inside roll. And I love the way he finishes in front of the goal, takes a hit, he pops up and gives Villanova the lead. Villanova capitalizing in the close quarters early on. And definitely, we, you just mentioned before the goal, the pace of play. Both teams really aggressive on the attack. And credit to Villanova, after conceding early, they've been aggressive. They've got close range, and those have just been too hard to stop. And look at that, it's three in a row. I believe all three were scored in less than 60 seconds. Yeah, these teams are not wasting any time with the shot clock. And you know, Villanova's just not letting Drexel really settle in defensively. And this is one of the top-ranked defenses in the country coming in. Their defensive efficiency ranking 13th in the nation. And Villanova's had no problem getting shots off and 
again, you know, you talk about Drew McGill, the goalie for Drexel, coming in on kind of a hot streak as CAA Defensive Player of the Week, but Villanova's had no problem solving him early. Yeah, maybe a little bit of a wake-up call for McGill in the net, having to deal with so many tough chances, but certainly the Dragons' defense just giving too much room for the Wildcats, and Tyler Bowes that time getting the goal. He continues his hot streak. He got his first career hat trick in Villanova's recent victory when they were up against Lehigh. And then in two years my job Going back to the invert here. AI. Now they'll play it around again from the back, looking to get up close. But the Dragons putting some more pressure to stop those opportunities for the moment. They bring it all the way back up top. A little room down the right side. That's where they've liked two of their three goals to be scored from. But so far, the Dragons doing a lot better, slowing them down. The shot clock at 30 seconds and counting. Yep, Drexel able to slide and recover a couple times on this possession. And now they're bringing it inside. That shot goes a little bit wide, so it'll stay with the Wildcats. But it took longer for them to really find that opportunity. And at that angle, it was a tougher shot for Villanova to take. An effort from a bit further away, it's going to stay with the Wildcats as it goes wide. Don't think McGill had the save there, but he's in a position to try to get on the board, averaging quite a few saves to start the season. They get it up close, and this time Drex will be able to stop the attack. McGill looks getting like, on top of it. Yeah, it looks like Villanova was in the crease there as they tried to go under five seconds left in the shot clock. I like the aggressiveness, right? You'll see some teams sometimes, you know, they pick the ball off the end line with five or six seconds left in the shot clock and they dump it in the corner. I like the way that Villanova attacked there and was strategic about it and they didn't let up any transition down the other end. So let's see if Drexel can go two for two on offense on their end. They'll start and they go ahead and do it. A second, almost an immediate response. And that's just what they needed after three were instantly scored from Villanova after the opener. Two in a row on the attack. I love this replay. Yeah, and it's simple again. I'm not quite sure the feed was initially going to him, but I think it sneaks through the crease here. You'll watch a cutter for Drexel get checked. And oftentimes that seems lucky, but for a goal scorer like Semple, he's in the right spot at the right times more often than not, and he's able to catch a thing. Yeah, and I know and as you're a player yourself, you know that sometimes it's more about the positioning than the ability, because being in the right spot can open those opportunities to score as Drexel begins a new possession. No doubt. If you're a fan of offense, this first quarter has been absolutely amazing for you because we've had five goals and we're not even five minutes into the game <laughs> i think one defensive stop so far so and I even mean, that this came is my, this is my kind of pace as a, an attackman and a goal scorer i'm down let's let's get 30 goals in, in this game we'll see and at this rate we'll certainly reach 30. drexel want to keep that high scoring rate this ball's going to get away and stay with the dragons but yeah, I mean, we knew that these were some strong offenses entering the game, but a little surprising to see the Dragons already conceding three in those first five minutes. But it'll be the Dragons' offense back ready to go. Moving it around up top. Shot is fired. And that time it's going to get away and stay with Drexel. I think that was a save for Wilson to get on the board in terms of saves. Yep, you can see... In that back right corner, the shot clock resetting to 60. It starts at 80, but on any shot saved by a goalie or a shot off the post, that clock will reset to 60. Good hustle there. Yeah, going to stay with Villano or going to stay with Drexel, but yeah, definitely tough play running all the way to the sidelines as the ball got loose. And while the Wildcats can't win it back, they will slow down the Dragons for the time being and force them to start a brand new attack they'll bring it down the left and once going again to, looking going back to the invert yep dodging the, the short stick behind the goal usually with a midfielder 
Shot goes just a little bit wayward. Not a bad effort. And Drexel get the ball again. Now both teams definitely capitalizing with those plays early on. Although Villanova's been better at stopping those high percentage close range looks that the Wildcats had been capitalizing on when they're attacking. And this time the Drexel attack will come up short and Villanova gets the ball back. And they get their first stop as we get halfway through the first quarter here. Got to get it out of your end though. Yeah, the Dragons putting a lot of pressure, but Villanova gets it to the attacking half of play. And yeah, it's definitely an underrated part of the game because you think it's just easy to bring the ball up the field, but you know, sometimes you can cause a quick turnover and leave the defense very much out of position. Villanova, however, able to hold on and start a new attack from behind. Now some space up top. And they'll play it again around the back. Gonna get away and stay with Villanova. I think McGill had that one covered if that was a little closer on target. And another close play. There was some open space for the Wildcats on that shot. Still looking for some room around the side. Shot goes out of play. It's gonna stay with Villanova. Villanova not shy early on. They're just running and gunning. They're shooting from all angles, moving the ball well. Great tempo to that offense as they can one. They bring it up close and now a little bit further away than some of the other goals. It doesn't matter the distance if it finds the back of the net. Four to two for Villanova with 7.34 to go in the first quarter. Lucas Newton, number 14, the redshirt freshman out of California. So I'm not sure he's enjoying the gloomy, cloudy day here in Philly, but he's able to get to the rack, score, take a hit. Draw some contact and make the shot. Those are the type of bruises that you can look back and smile at after the game because they also led to a goal. The sixth no, no goal of the first quarter headed to the Wildcats. And yeah, Marcus, so far, as you've been as we've been talking about, Villanova aggressive on the attack. And of course, they have possession again. They've already taken 11 shots with five of them on target. Yeah, doing a nice job, just attacking with speed, mixing in some invert and um, again, you know, I think coming into this game, if you have a, a hot goalie that you want to solve, you, you've got to jump on them early, and I think they've done a nice job of that. They certainly have, and McGill will have some time to get back into a strong rhythm, but it's certainly a slow start as Drexel bring it up quickly, and they'll quickly respond once more. Drexel haven't had a lot of attacks, but when they attack, they've struck immediately. And this time, they got on the board to make it four to three. Hooley gets his first goal of the game. Yeah, nice job by Drexel here, solving this 10-man ride. You can see the Villanova goalie tracking back into the cage. And that was Connor Hooley, number 10, that was able to kind of fire it on that empty net. Those ones are those ones are the best as a, as a shooter. All you gotta do is put it on frame and it's going in. So we'll be back the circle for the face-off. Villanova have won five of seven, but this time Drexel will pick it up. And that's gonna be useful for the Dragons. They trail by one and now on a quick attack could even equalize. Ranged effort's gonna miss, but it'll stay with the Dragons with 6.43 to go in the first quarter. Now they'll slow things down after some quick counterattack goals. They'll have a chance to make a longer attack. Try to find their fourth of the period. And they'll do just that. And I think that has completed a first half hat trick for Semple. The Canadian shooter, number 88. I think he wears that number in honor of maybe the best Canadian goal scorer of all time. That would be Zach Greer back in the day who's still having a successful indoor career but 
Just love that. I love how he catches the ball loaded right into quick release. Looks like Drexel may be running a little set piece for him. You can see that righty clear through the wing, and then Semple just pops to his left. Easy, easy buckets. So with that, a first half hat trick for Semple, and we are tied at four, and we're about to reach the nine-minute mark of the game with six to go here in the first quarter. But the red-hot offenses have not cooled off. And it's certainly been at the dismay of both Wilson and McGill and goal to have to be on the losing end of all these attacks. <laughs> well, I think, again, you know, it's an out-of-conference game. Defense is maybe not as familiar with some of the dodging techniques or, um, you know, IQ of, of the, the players that they're going against. So once they settle in, I think we'll, we'll be seeing some more stops maybe as the game goes on. But I've been wrong before. Things could quiet down later on. I know the Dragons, while they are a pretty good team at getting goals early on, they've hit a brick wall in every third quarter they've had this season. As that shot's gonna be wayward up close. McGill holds on to it. That's his second save of the game, and I think that'll be a useful save to start to build some momentum. And now Villanova can build some momentum on defense if they can stop this Drexel attack. Slow down possession again. I'll say the Dragons have found multiple ways to beat the Villanova defense. Whether they bring it up quickly, find one or two passes to the open man, or just let the play develop and then they'll find some of the open passes or the play leads to a benefit. You'll see the shot clock winding down under 40 seconds now as still looking for some options, holding it out wide as Joyner. Now we'll cut to the inside. And good stop by Villanova to make the save. They'll bring it up the field. And the Wildcats looking to break this 4-4 tie and looking to end the Drexel scoring streak. Yeah, let's see if they go back to the invert here. It's real. Looks like they will. More movements towards the goal. This time the Dragons are able to stay in front. And now I'll pass it up top. Looking for some space. Wrap around. Shot gets away. And it will stay with the Wildcats. They've got 30 seconds to work with. Yeah, nice, job, nice job by Drexel defending that, that hung up situation. I think that was Lakata again. He looked to push that ready edge and couldn't get his shot off. And then a nice recovery to the backside. His plays from that position being a lot closely guarded late in the first quarter here by Drexel. Almost stumbles, stays on his feet. He's gonna get away and as the shot clock expires, it's going to go back to Drexel, so a good defensive stop by the Dragons as things have started to settle down with three minutes to go in the first yeah, quarter. That's definitely more the Drexel identity that we were looking to see today, right? Guys sliding, recovering, and Villanova, you know, running the shot clock out, not able to get a clean look at all in that position. So momentum squarely in the hands of Drexel. That Villanova defense still putting pressure high up, and they almost were able to get a, the ball right back. But Drexel hold on as the shot clock continues to wind down. Effort goes wide and will stay with the Dragons. Yeah, Drexel's a, a balanced unit, right? We, we've seen Semple, obviously. He's going to goal score. He had eight coming into this game. Guess how many assists? Zero. So he's definitely the goal scorer, but you have Hooley, you have Gavin Kelly who had that first assist. You have guys that can feed him the ball. And then you got Luke Tomac, number 47, who has an absolute righty hammer. And he converts 
Indeed. I mean, I think we were waiting to see Luke Tomac convert. He had five points with four goals against Sacred Heart, and it's right here where he scores first. Yeah, really nice job. The, you know, those are the guys that kind of stir the drink for this Drexel offense. We saw Kelly earlier draw and dump, and this is him again. He's just probing on that righty wing, puts a pass right on his teammate's ear, and Tomac knows what to do when he gets his hands free. But a great long range effort and Drexel are back in the lead five to four. We've got just two minutes left in the first quarter. And one of the final attacks of the quarter are gonna go to the Dragons as they win the ball off the face off. They've now won four of the 10 face offs we've had so far. Did not expect that many in the first quarter, if I'm being honest. Yeah, I mean, nine goals, not a, not a very common first quarter goal tally, especially in a very close game like this, is it's really just been back and forth. Villanova will get on top of the shot and stop the attack. That'll be good news for Wilson to get another save. And yeah. now the Wildcats bring it up. That was Anthony Wilson's best save of the day, I think, there, and, and timely again. End of quarter, now you give the ball back to your offense. Winning these end of quarter situations are something that I don't think people realize how important they are in terms of the mo momentum of a lacrosse game, right? If, if Villanova is able to score here and vice versa, if Drexel can get a stop, right? Both teams can take momentum into the end of the quarter. You just want to manage these clock situations really well. If I'm Villanova here, I'm not letting Drexel get the ball down on their offensive end at all. We've got 50 seconds on the game clock. 13 seconds less on the shot clock, but that'll be a costly turnover, and Drexel will be able to regain possession. And I think now they'll be looking to do what you had just mentioned, Marcus, not give Villanova any opportunities to take a, another goal entering the quarter break. Or will they as the ball gets loose after that check? Great ride. And it's gonna fall back to Villanova. They bring it up quickly. Shot, <laughs> and wow. Great save. Great save, and that is the McGill that has been leading the way in the CAA the entirety of those first four weeks of the season. And that's also the McGill that just won the Defensive Player of the Week with a massive stop to keep Drexel in front. Maybe a last second opportunity. Shot's gonna go wayward. Final chance for the Dragons with eight seconds to go in the quarter. They may be able to make it 6-4. The Wildcats will just hope to enter the break with the one goal deficit. Played around, three seconds left. Shot is gonna go wayward and with one tenth of a second, we'll literally just have time to inbound the ball and head to the end of the quarter. And with that, a pretty exciting first quarter of play comes to a close. A total of 27 shots, 14 of them on target, with nine goals in... Fifteen minutes have been played, nine goals have been scored, and for the moment, it's Drexel, who are technically the underdogs in this matchup. I know Villanova was receiving a few votes in recent top 25 poll while Drexel hadn't for this upcoming matchup, but they lead five to four, and in a matchup of explosive offenses, the Dragons have just been one step ahead, and with this hard fight for the faceoff, will they be able to stay ahead? And no, they won't. It's eventually gonna be knocked away and it's gonna fall to the Wildcats. Good opportunity there, I thought, potentially for Villanova to throw the ball inside to that cutting LSM, but they elect to just cycle the ball around. They'll get their O guys on. Probably a wise decision if you ask their coaches. It may as well slow things down. They're entering the second quarter with less momentum than the Dragons, especially since Drexel scored the final goal in the first period of play. And you've got a long quarter to go. If you could get the goal early, you could really steal the momentum right back, especially to make it a tied game once more. Now they'll play it from the top. We saw Drexel convert from long range. Villanova's been better at closer ranges, or even from 
arguably medium range. And now played inside, barely deflected away, but it stays with the Wildcats. And oh, there was a really good opportunity for Lakata, but the ball drops out of his stick. Yeah, it looks like Drexel is in is in kind of a pseudo zone. So maybe just trying to, again, slow the tempo down. Defensive coordinator Tucker Durkin, one of the best defensive players of all time, Team USA member. So a nice schematic change up, but it doesn't work. Yeah, they were trying to lock down the close range shots of the zone. Bishoner says, fine, let me try one from long range. He beats McGill to make it 5-5. Yeah, and that's the, that's the problem with zones sometimes is, you know, it might work for, you know, 60, 70 seconds of, of the shot clock, but Villanova able to stay with it. A really nice feed from Lakata there, and Mishner's able to bury it. Yeah, the Dragons were struggling on those first few possessions. When they conceded three straight goals to Villanova, they were losing the man battles where the Villanova attackers would make the move, cut to the inside, and get a point-blank shot. But here, when they're running zone to avoid those point blank opportunities, they're able to pull it up top and Missioner converts for his first goal of the game. Nice ground ball there by number nine, Steven Zupacic for Villanova. And I'm gonna correct myself, give that assist to Mason Real on that last goal for Villanova. That's his second point of the game. And Villanova now able to take some momentum, not just from that opening goal, but by winning the face-off right afterwards. They've won two-thirds of the face-offs, eight of the 12 to start the game. It won't correlate with the sixth goal that time. Shot goes wild, and Drexel regained possession with better positioning. Good hustle on the, the run out there for Drexel, right? Those are kind of those, you know, they don't really st show up on the stat sheet per se, but you know, those are the little momentum plays that if you add them up over time, they can help win you these games. Yeah, and I think certainly the only player, uh, the only people to really notice those hustle efforts to make those plays are the coaches. And ironically, those are the people you want to see those plays the most because that's a good way you can impress the coach by he'll think that, hey, he's doing a great job of getting in front of the ball and winning us the possession right back. And it's crucial for the Dragons as they had just conceded the opening goal and lost a second face off in a row. So now they'll have a chance to try to open the scoring and get on the board here in the second quarter to retake the lead. Yep. Play it behind both teams looking for those inverted plays. Nothing open as of now, but now he gets up close and converts. Close range effort for Crawford and it's six to five. Great lefty take here by Witt Crawford. Coming into this game, five goals, no assists. You can tell he's going hard to the rack here. I really like his posture there. He runs up that hash, sticking his left hand, but he doesn't look like he's shooting until the last second. And I think goalies sometimes struggle to react to shots like that because of the deceptive release. So nice job there by Crawford. By the time Wilson realized that was going to be a close shot, it was too late, and Drexel are back in the lead. After a pretty hard-fought face-off. Look to see a penalty on the play. Can't tell whether it's going to be on the Wildcats or the Dragons, but yeah, both teams fighting hard to regain possession. And I think it'll be Villanova now on a man advantage. So this could be big for the Wildcats after conceding the first goal of the second quarter. They now will have a big opportunity with 11.45 to go. Yeah, Villanova comes into the game just two for 13 on the man up, 15% as a top 20 Division I team. You want to be around that 40% mark. So they've got their work cut out for them. Let's see if they can put one home today. We'll start off by Good spacing, long range effort, misses. I think McGill would have had that covered if it was closer on target. But yeah, and even in a smaller sample size, just a 
about 13, 15 attempts in the first four games, it's still not great to only be averaging under 20% when you mentioned the best teams in the nation can get it at least a third of the time. Yeah, and it, it just seems like they're they're content to sit in this 3-3. Three, three. You know, you got to move your feet, you got to find gaps, and you got to try to throw a skip skip pass here to get the defense rotating. Long range effort stopped by McGill. And yeah, I think Villanova a little bit worried to really attack inside. There was actually a little bit of space that the Dragons were conceding up close, but they had just enough room, and Villanova elect to make a long range effort. Not bad from real, but it gives McGill his third save of the game. Yeah, I'd like to see just the Villanova man up players just move their feet a little bit more, get an exchange on the perimeter, get a little pass down, pick down, just to move your feet, which helps you engage more as a player. I know when I stand around sometimes and try to try to throw throw passes, they end up being a little bit less accurate than they were if I was moving my feet. And if you're Drexel, those are the shots that you want to give up. That was probably about 14, 15 yards, and McGill was all over it. Now Drexel play it inside and will extend the advantage. And like you were mentioning, you'd rather have close range shots than long range shots. And it's up close where they beat Wilson for the seventh time today. 10.09 left in the second. And well, Drexel, if the momentum had been just quickly lost to start the second quarter, they've now got it back. Let's look at the replay. Caden Zadell was another young buck I used to coach when I lived down in North Carolina back in the day. Just able to sit inside on the crease and a great feed. And I love that quick release, right? If, if you're you're under six, seven yards, it's not so much about, you know, perfect placement or massive power, but if you can get it out of your stick quick and put it on the frame, goalies struggle with those quick releases. Yeah, and it's just that great combination of getting it quickly away, not giving the goalie a lot of time to react, and it's doubled up when it's so close that the goalie generally has about a split second to put the stick or even his body in the right spot to make the save. So that's why they're the high leverage opportunities and that's why Drexel were able to score. Here they go, trying to bring it up close again. This time the Wildcats force them back outside. However, the Dragons still hold on to the ball and will continue this attack here. Looks like it's gonna be a man up opportunity as well for Drexel, flag down on the Villanova defense, maybe either a hold or a slash, we'll see. But if you can score here, either way, it's a free possession. So look for Drexel maybe to take a chance here. So still have it up close, but a good job staying in front of his man. Dragons bring it all the way up top. Effort from Rage and finds the net. A filthy goal that time from Tomac. Tomac with the ridiculous scoop off the ground. And with the shot clock running down, he's just like, why not let me cook? And he pulls this thing back near side. The handle, the shot, Ooh. that is money. Call Gordon Ramsay because Tomac has been serving up a five course meal with that effort from long range. I mean, wow. That's also gonna prompt the timeout for the Wildcats. They've conceded three straight goals after getting the opening goal of this. Welcome back to Lacrosse TV, 8-5 lead for Drexel. And Marcus, I know we were talking about, we love to see the offense, and you're even potentially saying could be a 30-goal game. I think that's a pretty good guess at the goals we could finish with 8.48 to go in the second quarter. We've already seen 13 scored. Yeah, just playmaking and great pace from both of these offenses, and Drexel certainly has the momentum as we hit almost the halfway point of the second quarter. And that is going to be unfortunate for Villanova. They thought they were finally getting the ball back after initially losing the faceoff. But as Drexel wins the faceoff, they'll now get a man-up advantage. It may have been slashing there, just getting a little too aggressive with the stick to try to win the ball back for the Wildcats. And you don't want to concede a frustration foul after a timeout and conceding three straight goals. 
No doubt this is going to be big here for this Villanova defense to really dig in, get a stop, try to get the ball back to their offense. So it'll be definitely tough on the Wildcats defense. If you've missed the start of the second quarter, the Wildcats got on the board to turn a 5-4 score line to 5-5, but now Drexel made it 8-5, and that shot goes away, and it's gonna go to the Wildcats, so the man-up advantage won't work out for the Dragons at the time being. Crucial stop for Villanova, because trailing by four at this stage of the second quarter could definitely be discouraging for the team, even though we've still got well over 30 minutes left to play. Yeah, an interesting call there. Uh, Drexel looks good on the backup from the video that we're watching, but I think the ref called a moving screen on Drexel as they were trying to open up um, Augustine for a shot. So rarely do you see those called, um, but I guess maybe the refs are just keen to look for it on man-up situations when you're going to set more screens than normal. Shot misses high in the net, and yeah, wouldn't be surprised. I mean, the referee's just making sure the team that's already got the player advantage isn't getting any more unfair advantages in a spot like this as the Wildcats play it around. Two players cutting around the same spot, and they find the shot into the net. The Great dual answer. runs. Great answer from the, the Villanova offense there as Mitchner cuts through, catches, and buries. Cut the lead back to two. And we see the dual runs in the inside here, Marcus. Yeah, just just no one stayed with Mitchner. I, th I thought it Drexel maybe trying to pass him off and, and switch, but you got to guard your man. You got to cover the guys that are cutting. And McIntyre with the nice feed. Mitchner with the finish. That's Mitchner's second goal and McIntyre's first assist of the game. But yeah, just a great play, forcing a tough decision from the Dragons' defense. And the defender chose, I think, somewhat poorly that time. The 13th goal of the year for Missioner. He continues his strong start, and Villanova makes this a two-goal game. And now but they're Drexel offsides, offsides in the clear. That's unfortunate for the Wildcats. It gives Drexel a new chance to get back on the board. <clears throat> and now with that two-goal lead, they may try to take some time off the clock as we continue here in the second quarter. And they've had some good attacks that have started out slow. Yeah, and those are the, the type of plays that just kind of frustrate you as a head coach, but these are the ones that you love. Great hustle there. And the fight for the ball continuing. Drexel eventually win it back. Really good heads up effort to knock the ball loose but Drexel may be a counterattack possibility. Down the middle, scores. So what looked to be an opportunity for the Wildcats has been turned around. A third goal, a hat trick for Tamak in the first half. Yeah, it was Steven Zupacic, number nine for Villanova, who was pressing out, took the ball from Tomac, and then kind of a scramble in the middle of the field, and Villanova just gets caught off balance. Tomac trailing the play, and he's able to just go low to high there. Great job showing his stick and changing levels on that release. Beautiful shot. I think certainly it was the turnover that kind of hurt Wild the Wildcats in the end because they were moving up the field. They weren't as focused on defense after winning the ball back as this faceoff is going to fall to the Wildcats. Good movement to get in front. The Wildcats are going to send it all the way back to their goalie, but you love the effort on the play from Villanova's number 21 as the Wildcats will now bring it up the field. Played out wide and they'll continue, but with the defense off guard after Drexel immediately won it back, they then allowed them to score that goal, the 15th of the game. Now the Wildcats will fully hold on to possession They'll be able to slow things down with six minutes left in the half. They'll have a chance rolling around. Long range effort. And a good save by McGill. Great save by McGill. Nice little pick action for Villanova. To set up a good look, but McGill stonewalls him. Good one-two passing <laughs> inside, but an even better save as the ball stays away. 
and the ball still gets loose. It's a scramble, and Wilson eventually finds it. But wow, I mean, how did he make the save that time? That was perfectly executed. Here comes Villanova, too. Villanova now will slow it down. They almost had an opportunity immediately on the counterattack after that point-blank shot just couldn't find the back of the net for Drexel. Now playing it behind. I think they'll set up the invert one more time. They'll just bring it back out to the left-hand side of the field. Still waiting. Similar motion to what they scored on there. And they just drew a flag on a little check on the inside. And that hit the net, but it hit, crucially, the exterior of the net. Good news for the Wildcats. They get the man up opportunity with 4.44 to go. And you can see Coach Brian Volker at the bottom of your screen with the palms up. A former defensive player himself at the Great Johns Hopkins School. He's probably bothered that that's a flag. I'm sure assistant coach Tucker Durkin is as well. Um, a little check on the inside I don't, I don't think is worthy of a flag, but um, I'm sure Villanova will take it, and they're desperate for a goal, especially a man-up goal. They need to get this unit rolling. Now just two for 14 on the year. Yeah, there's no time like the present to turn that around, but that could also be a little bit of a saving grace for the Dragons that this man-up unit has been not great to start the year for Villanova, to put it, I'd say, kindly. And they're still looking for some space around the outside. Just Played up stagnant. close. Oh. Bounced off the stick and put into the net. That looked like an error as the pass had ricocheted off the stick, but it fell right to Lakata. And if you give him some space, he finds the back of the net. 9-7. They're now 3 for 15 on those man-up attempts. And they don't ask how, right? They ask how many. This pass actually banks off of the helmet of the Villanova player. I think that is Michener down low on that lefty pipe. I think it got tipped, hit his helmet. It pops right into Lakata's stick. And props to him for making the play when your team needs it. Lakata is certainly a playmaker. It's funny that it hit the helmet. I couldn't tell because they've got the, the white handle, like the white bars on the mask. It was, I think, tough to tell because it just blends in with the ball. But, yeah. Hey, I mean, sometimes you just got to use your head to make a play. But yeah. I'm not sure Villanova's coach exactly means using your actual head if he tells his team to do that. <laughs> Fight for the ball. Wildcats fighting to keep it. And they will for the moment. But Drexel not giving them a lot of room to keep it forward. And now they'll have a chance to set up a new attack. 3.45 to go. And the best thing you can do after scoring that goal is to score another. The Wildcats looking for some space as they play it from the top. Yep, looks like this might be the second line midfield out there. So we'll see if maybe the attack is a little bit more aggressive, real or Lakata. Now from behind, good coverage, close range. Effort goes wayward. I think McGill may have been able to tip it. And it stays with the Wildcats. They'll continue attack, but they've only got 13 seconds and counting on the shot clock to try to convert. And the Drexel defense is gonna knock the ball away. And as the shot clock was three seconds away from expiring, the Dragons come up with a big defensive stop and will bring it back up the field. Really well-timed slide there by Drexel. Just to anticipate that inside roll, understand that it's late in the shot clock and you want to support your short stick middies. Nice job putting the ball on the ground there. Big stop. Now with low time to go on the shot clock, all you need to do is just disrupt that play and there won't be enough time to capitalize. And now with plenty of time, they'll see that shot go a bit high. I think that shot just missed up top. I don't think Wilson had a tip to it because it went pretty far above the net. But certainly Wilson had it covered if it was on target. I was already ready to celebrate that goal for, for Drexel. Rarely do you see Max Semple miss a wide open step down like that with his hands free. And another moving pick for Drexel. That is tough for the Dragons, that shot had missed, but 
it now will ultimately kill the attacking chance. We've got two minutes to go, and depending on how long this attack goes for Villanova, Drexel may be able to wind up with the ball for the final attack of the half, unless Villanova scores and leads to a face-off, which I think they definitely prefer as they try a long-range effort. Great save by McGill. That's his fifth in the game. Nova's got too many guys on the field. There you go. The ref finally figured it out. <laughs> well, still the save, but it probably won't be recorded in the stat sheet given Villanova had too many men forward. But, yeah. hey, with the accidental man advantage, good job by McGill to still deny that long-range attempt. Depends on how much the uh, statistician likes Drew McGill. <laughs> maybe he'll give him the save, maybe he won't. But, no, it's listed as a turnover. Again, Villanova just kind of sloppy in those in-between areas, clearing the ball, going off sides, having too many men on the field. It looks like Drexel is going to take a timeout here as we wind down in the second quarter. We've got 82 seconds to play, and Drexel... And we're back on Lacrosse TV. Drexel lead Villanova 9-7 with 1.22 to go in the half. The Dragons trying to make the most of this final opportunity to steal some more momentum entering halftime. And Marcus, I know as a player, as a coach, you've been in some of these situations. What's the type of play you'd want to draw up in a spot like this? Yeah, I think, it, again, it's based off what the defense is doing. So as you can see, Villanova looks like they're sliding into a zone here. Right? The easiest way to recognize that is if you look to the crease, you'll see defenders that you know, are passing guys off or they're just guarding space. So you see 24 on Villanova bump across and it'll bump across here. Right? So Drexel's gonna run this clock down probably to about 20 seconds and then they're gonna initiate like they are here. 20 seconds to go on the shot clock. And as you mentioned, things speeding up now for the Dragons. Still looking for some room, good roll, but can't find the space. And now eight sevens, seven seconds. They may need to just take a quick shot or send it away. And they only get the good pass to the inside when the shot clock expires. Good defense by the Wildcats to shut them down. And they'll have 23 seconds left to go to finish up the first half. Yeah, not, not the worst possession for Drexel, right? You, you run the shot clock all the way down. You're able to probably sub guys on. You know, you, you don't give a clean transition look, but now you got to dig in and get a stop here. And they've got eight seconds to hold on to this two-goal lead. Villanova looking for a buzzer beater to enter the break. Everything is covered, and they bring it up top. They're not going to get the shot off. And it was denied, I think, as well. I but like it, a little, little extracurricular there. Guys getting in their face. You know, Drexel probably thought that shot was a little too late after the horn sounded. But these Philly teams don't like each other. It's been a tough but Yeah, and one thing that I think watch out for now for Drexel, more alert on the defensive end. I mentioned briefly at the start of the broadcast that Drexel run out of gas, really, in the third quarter. They've only scored once all season in the third Jeez. period of play. Oh, wow. Yeah, so... <laughs> Way to do your homework there and share that. We'll be interesting to see if they can break that trend or if it keeps rolling here. And what makes them, and what makes it even funnier? Villanova have scored their most goals in the third quarter. Granted, it's only 15 compared to 14 in the first and fourth quarter, or 13 in the fourth quarter. But a team that's really good at scoring in the third, a team that's not so good at scoring in the third. That means we should have an exciting 14 minutes and 57 seconds yet to go as the Wildcats start us off. And on cue, Villanova makes the first play of the third quarter with a face-off win. They've won the majority of face-offs so far. And while it's given them more shots, they don't have as many shots on target. Let's see as they continue this attack, now attacking from left to right. From the left-hand side to the right-hand side. Playing it out from the back. They won't find the move to the inside, but still have time to work with. 50 seconds on the shot clock. to the back and picked up very good turnover 
for the Dragons to cause that from the Wildcats. And that is going to be useful for Drexel and definitely the opposite of what you want for Villanova. Now they'll play it inside. Close range effort. It goes away but stays with the Dragons. Nice cut. Way to re reward the cutter there. I think that was Semple on the feed. And number one, the D midi for Drexel. It's a really nice cut, just couldn't find find the net. And the Wildcats, I think they were just caught off guard on that possession on defense. Well executed, cut to the net, and Drexel were close to doubling their third quarter goal tally on the season and make it 10-7. <laughs> I think in a game like this, they'll certainly be scoring a few in the third quarter. I don't think that uh, even with their slump so far, you can really keep this offense quiet for too long just because of how good they've been all day. Should I say night as the sun has set? They've still got a chance. They're working around up top. And again, with a two goal lead, they can slow the play down. That time they don't have a moving screen. Pass around the back goes wayward and that's an unfortunate turnover for the Dragons. So both teams quiet on their first possessions. Yeah, and after the you know 16 goal output, 47 shots in the first half, we were maybe bound to see a regression here. You know, defensive adjustments from both teams at halftime. Now it'll be the Wildcats bringing it up with a little bit of space. We'll see how the Dragons' defensive adjustments work against this Wildcats attack. I also wonder if they're going to slow down their attack after being extremely aggressive back in the first quarter and at moments through in the second quarter. Can't find the shot up close. Wrap around and goes wide but stays with the Wildcats. Yep, some good flow from Villanova. They've really liked these razor style picks where the attacker can run off horizontally and look to feed. I might have to restart it if it keeps. They hit Missioner on that cut earlier in the game. Let's see if they kind of stay with that. Yep, they've got their defender hung. Sloppy passing though. Yeah, both teams with not the best passing to start out the third quarter, but the Wildcats are able to hold on to it. They bring it in close. That is an impressive save from McGill. Yeah, McGill kind of able to see that one the whole way. Right at his feet. I think those are some of the shots that goalies really love to see. And he's all over it. So now it'll be Drexel back on the attack. And whenever you get a good save like that, that gives the offense some momentum, gives them a chance to maybe want to play a little bit harder, get this opportunity here. And now with a run, it was open for half a second, but couldn't get the shot off. And the Dragons will still hold on to the ball with 45 and counting on the shot clock. Trying to open space, but Villanova stay in front. Now a cut and a shot. And it just missed the net. I think it went off the top of the crossbar. I am surprised as to how that didn't find its way into the net. Yeah, nice flow on, on offense there from Drexel. Villanova slid, had to recover. And a big time save there by, yeah, it looks like it might have hit the post. Obviously hard to see from where we are, but thank you to our stats team for letting us know what's going on on the, on the ground. Yeah, I mean, that was a really close shot. Could have hit the net, could have hit the post, but and the Drexel stats crew, they do award that off the post, but Wilson probably is keeping that as a save in his, uh, in his eyes. As, oh, that was a great cut to the net, but it just gets dropped. That could have been a very good opportunity for the Wildcats. Things really slowing down. The first time in the game where we haven't had a goal in the first five minutes. Effort just misses out wide. It's going to stay with the Wildcats. McGill definitely had that one covered, though. Yep, defense is really doing a nice job. Guarding tendencies. 
three players attacking the ball. They knock the stick free, and the Dragons swarming to win it back. It almost kind of reminds me of like the mythical dragon, the Hydra. You've got the three heads, and that shot's going to go wide and stay. But actually, yeah, stay with the Dragons for now. But all three players just converging to make the turnover. Yeah, and I, <laughs> I like that reference a lot of the three-headed monster. Uh, sometimes one guy sliding is not enough. you got to bring two, especially against a great Dodger like Mason Rio. And Drexel able to push there. Again, I, they had an opportunity in transition, so now that's back-to-back -back chances where they're getting good looks in transition, not able to capitalize, but I like that they're considering scoring in transition instead of six on six. I mean, it's always where the defense is a little more vulnerable as that's a nice heads up interception on the play by Kelly, but however, it's gonna go back to Villanova. He made Villanova the interception. Have, they have numbers here if they wanna push. Not able to find the advantage though. Nice save by Wilson. Right, we mentioned at half, him him kind of getting going is gonna be important for this Villanova defense. And he had a post on the last possession and a save there, but Nova turns the ball right back over. Yeah, turnovers, even with still, we've got about 24 minutes left to go, including the fourth quarter coming up. You don't wanna waste these opportunities because sometimes it's just that one missed possession that can cost you, especially as Drexel's games have always been so close this season. That's where those missed shots, missed passes really count. Absolutely. It's all those little things. It's what you work on day in and day out of practice. It's These guys have been together since late August, right? So these tight games are, are won and lost with the details and the discipline of the teams that can execute better in crunch time. Now about eight minutes to go. Drexel about to get a man up opportunity. We saw the flag go down a little bit earlier. But we'll have a chance to score right before. Play it from the back, looking for that move again. Now just bring it up top. Get a little bit of space inside. Well defended up close. And that is another call on the play. We'll have to yeah. see what the rule is there. It might be a push. I, I didn't. I didn't love that second flag. I think that's a situation where you have a, a dodging an attackman who's, you know, going you know kamikaze style to the goal, and I don't think the refs should reward an out of control dodger like that with a push when it's maybe a questionable call. It looks like a hold for that second one is what they're calling. So that's gonna be extremely useful for the Dragons and now a very bad spot for Villanova with just four players up against the six for Drexel and they'll have a chance not just to get on the board with that lead, but also to continue to wind down the clock here in the third quarter. But hey, I mean, with a two-man advantage, you might as well go for goal. Yeah, this is huge, right? So Drexel can go up by three and take control of the game. And they'll do they just do that. Right there. Very simple movement through X. And it's Hooli on the back pipe with the catch and finish. Yeah, Hooli has been on fire in terms of scoring this season. Entered today with 10 points. He now has five on the game. That's his ninth goal of the season. Alongside three assists he's already able to pick up. But here with just the man advantage, someone's going to be open. It just so happened to be Hooli. Exactly. Great patience. Right? And that's a big time goal, right? Because even if you don't score, right? If it, score, take the score out of it, right? <laughs> Getting a stop when you're two men down is a huge momentum swing. Right? And for Drexel to be able to capitalize on that, get an easy dunk and finish. Now they go up by three and they're in control of this game. That's the first goal of the quarter. I mean, we've seen a lot of high scoring quarters, but and not a surprise to see the game slow down here in the third, but maybe the Wildcats will now have an opportunity to respond as they begin a brand new attack. They certainly would like to, and most of the times today, they've been able to respond after Drexel score. Ball goes out of play, but it's going to stay with the Wildcats. And time will continue to wind down at 
4.06 to go. Looks like we're going to have a flag down here for Nova as they score with the flag. It'll be interesting to see if this is going to be called an interference or a cross check by Drexel. I think they're going to have number 51, the defenseman for Drexel, running through the pick, potentially raising his stick up, which is not legal. Kind of like a high stick in hockey, if you will. Yeah, we couldn't see that on the replay. I mean, for the replay, we just see that beautiful shot. But yeah, because I saw that from the screen. I saw the player go down hard after the screen right there. So that'll be bad news for Drexel. And may have been the break that Villanova needed to get back into the fight. Yeah, Nicholas Lucchesi on the goal. Give the assist to Mason Real. And I think that flag was wiped off. I think they were going to call it interference, which is just a 30-second penalty. And Nova now taking control of this face-off battle, winning 15 of 21 on the day. Been dominant on the face-offs, had a majority of possessions, and it's certainly in close fights where if you can control the face-off and you have momentum, that's usually a good recipe for success. And they'll get a chance to now make this a one-goal deficit 6.25 left to play. Nothing was open from behind the net, so they'll bring it up top as it looks like they make a change. Now moving forward is Bose. He's now going to pick it up on the right side. They'll send it back up top. Still looking. Goes back to Bose. Plays to the inside, but a few defenders get in the way and tip the ball away. Yeah, Taylor, and I misspoke. Um, Villanova is actually man up right now, so Drexel with another, another stop against this porous Man up unit for Villanova. Again, eliminating any chances at momentum. Big stop there for the Dragons. And now the momentum will shift. I mean, we had just mentioned when Drexel was on the man up advantage and scored against four Wildcat defenders that if you're able to make that stop, the momentum goes back to your favor. And that's exactly what they needed because Villanova got the man of advantage after they got their first goal of the yeah, second half. So absolutely. they're back to status quo, back to them leading by two. And now maybe they could try to make it a three goal lead once more. They play it down to the right. They'll play it again from the back. See if there's gonna be a cut to the inside. See if someone can get open. Looking for the wrap around to the right side, but it wasn't open. Good defense from the Wildcats. And the shot clock will continue to wind down. 20 seconds with five minutes to go. Played up top. Good check to prevent the long range effort. There's the shot and there it's gonna go back to the Wildcats. And a good job to hold on to the ball by Wilson and start a new attack. Great job on defense. I think that was Stevie Jones, 21 on the closeout. Able to get a piece there, not allow a free shot for Drexel, big stop. Now the Wildcats bring it all the way back forward. And again, it's been back and forth. Both teams not really able to get far in front. And whenever a team does get a quote unquote comfortable lead, the other team is there for the response. And this has been the most comfortable this game has been for Drexel. And it's still a little bit uneasy as the Wildcats Looking good as they continue this attack. 34, 33 seconds to go on the shot clock. Tough effort. Very hard angle to put a shot on target, but it does stay with Villanova. Yeah, and, and Villanova content to just challenge their matchup back at X, doing a lot of isolations and, and big littles from behind the goal. You haven't seen too many initiation dodges from up top. It's been Lakata a lot, and there's... Another take by him that is not backed up. Yeah, Drexel now get the ball back, and that'll be an unfortunate loss of possession there for Villanova. But I will say, throughout most of the game, running those isolations, getting those one-on-one -on -one matchups, has really worked out well for the Wildcats. They've utilized sort of their strength in those situations, especially early to get those goals. But 
As time has gone on, Drexel shifting more to a zonal defense from time to time. They're able to do better in those spots, but it doesn't mean the Wildcats can't convert when they're able to get the step in front of their man and get a point-blank chance against McGill. Yeah, and then you can see here for Drexel initiating more with Tomok up top. Gavin Kelly, 42, as it's Tomok, lefty, low angle. Let Tomok cook. We've been saying it all day, and he takes the one-on-one -on -one advantage, makes a cut, and fires his fourth goal of the night. And just really honestly displaying the game that this guy has. Clean right to left split. And he's able to put that stick back in his right hand as he finishes there, which I think all coaches would appreciate. You bring that stick back to the middle, it gives you just a little bit more angle to score instead of fading down the alley and shooting with your outside hand, which in his case is his weak hand. So nice job taking the extra step there and finishing. And now the Wildcats will get the face off and maybe a chance here on the transition as a quick response. That was a very nice battle for the ball in the circle. Both players were both covering it and pushing back and forth for a few seconds until it falls back to the Villanova defense and they're able to bring it forward. But it now gets back to Drexel and they'll have a chance to secure even more momentum. And, and as we were, you were talking about earlier, that momentum late in the quarter is just oh so important. Whenever I've Absolutely. covered games at the University of Tampa, I've talked about it with Bruce and we both agree there's a big sort of mind, like psychological mindset to yeah. have that momentum entering it. So I'm glad to hear that for, as a player with yourself playing at the professional at the collegiate level and coaching there too, that you feel the same and that you've had that experience firsthand where you've had the benefits of getting that late goal and the downsides of conceding that late goal and now Villanova win the ball back. Absolutely great check there. And now the Wildcats will start a new possession and they'll bring it up, play it from the left side. Two minutes to go and they've got a minute on the shot clock. The question is, do they go extremely aggressive on the attack or try to wind out the clock to give less time for Drexel? Well, that answer is gonna be they lose the ball, so it's gonna fall back to the Dragons. Definitely didn't love that low angle shot, especially on a goal like Drew McGill. You gotta make him work a little bit more than that move him pipe to pipe. I think that's just a shot. You can get that attempt any time in the shot clock and, and taking it early on before you kind of run some offense, I think, is going to frustrate some of these Villanova coaches. It also gives McGill his eighth save of the game. He's back up to 500 on his save percentage. And it's certainly a total and it's been a pretty active game for both offenses definitely be happy about yeah and he's just gotten better as the game goes on right that's what you want from your goalie doesn't matter if he makes all the saves in the world in the first quarter if he doesn't make any when the game is in crunch time you're gonna struggle yeah it's certainly more about how you finish rather than how about how you start and now a chance to finish the quarter Villanova get the ball back good save or actually turnover there caused by Wilson so he gets uh, the cost turnover on the defensive end. It wasn't his seventh save, but it pretty much does the same thing and allows Villanova the final possession. Game clock at 25 seconds, shot clock at 50. So they'll be ready to wind down the clock and look to make it a two goal game heading into the final 15 minutes. Cut to the inside. Ball is gonna be picked up by McGill. And they'll be able to reset play quickly for this final chance. I think that was a save. Could have been could be a crease violation getting a little too close. And the Dragons won't have enough time to get the shot. Four seconds left. Villanova can just send it far. And that will take us to the fourth quarter. So we've played 45 minutes here at, Drex at Drexel's home stadium. And they have done well. They hold a three-goal lead entering the final period of play.
And we're back at Vitus Field. On the cross TV, Drexel lead 11 to eight. And right as we get started with the fourth quarter, let's give you a look ahead for both the Dragons and the Wildcats. Drexel will be on the road against St. Joseph's on March 10th. And Villanova will host Pennsylvania on March 9th. It'll be the Wildcats' fourth game of the, sorry, third game of the year, a fourth game of the year against a top 25 ranked team in the nation. So it'll be another tough opponent for the Wildcats, but certainly Marcus, what are your thoughts about sort of starting those games of the season against some really tough ranked teams to lead you into conference play? Yeah, it's, it's definitely the way to go, right? You want to test yourself. You want to, you know, go through those challenging situations. You want to play in close games and have to prove that you can win in the fourth quarter. So it's all a way to get prepared for conference. And again, this is another challenge for Villanova tonight. Their defense has stepped up, though, right? We've seen a couple calls, turnovers, right? So it's not only just like Drexel missing shots or Drexel throwing the ball out of bounds. Villanova is actually doing a really nice job causing turnovers. I think that's three straight possessions now. And as I think definitely as they settle in again for the fourth quarter, that's where some of the lessons when they've taken on Yale and Penn State and Colgate to start the year, all of those teams in the top 20 in the nation, that's where they can really pay off when you're facing the teams that are still good because Drexel, you know, they still lead by three, but they'll be easier opponents on paper and yeah, having those tough opponents, it's always huge to get started. As Villanova working it from the top, playing it inside, shot goes wide, but they've got a player backing them up, and it will stay with the Wildcats. Yeah, much much better flow. Oh, on this possession, as they put one home, Lakata to Michener. We've heard that connection before, and that was just that was probably Villanova's best offensive possession, definitely of the second half, or maybe of even the night. They're just dodging from different angles. They're sharing the ball a little bit more. These past couple possessions have been just one and done. And this, I think they got a lot more touches and they were able to find a nice cutter from Michener and he's able to score. Yeah, we can take a look at that one more time. I mean, yeah, beautiful play. And I think maybe that possession apart from, or was probably the best overall possession, arguably, uh, the best goal apart from maybe one of the long range efforts or another good cut to the net but I think Villanova would say the best goal would be their 12th one if they can retake <laughs> the lead from Drexel absolutely it's like Tom Brady which ring is the best it's the next one it was the 20th goal of the game if these offenses can heat back up we may reach the 30 goal tally we were mentioning back in the first quarter but the game is certainly going to speed up in these final minutes. And Villanova, looking to bring it inside, won't have anything open for now. He'll bring it back up top. Effort is going to be picked up. That's the ninth save by McGill. And Drex will bring it back up the field. McGill standing tall between the pipes. He's now above 50% on the day. He's creeping towards that 62% mark. Or that 56% mark that he's accustomed to. And again, another good offensive possession by Nova, but a good goalie beats a bad shooter sometimes. And that one was just a little bit high, and McGill didn't seem to struggle with that. The Dragons looking to respond now. They lead by two still, but getting that three-goal lead is just going to be so important, especially here in the early stages of the fourth quarter. Giving more momentum for the Wildcats for too long makes that comeback not only easier, but a lot more possible in their eyes. They'd like to limit the amount of hope Villanova has of making a comeback. As there's a long range effort, not gonna get through. Picked up by the Wildcats and they'll bring it back up the field. See if they push in transition here, they've got a cutter up ahead of the play. Oh, we got <laughs> coming on the field yelling, slow it down. I think that's Mason Real, number 29 right here with the ball yelling, <laughs> just telling his, Defenders to get off the field like, hey, let the O guys do what the O guys do. Yeah, he clearly really wanted the uh, attack to lead this new possession with 11.15 to go. They'll bring it inside. Shot's going to get a bit wayward. It's going to go to the Dragons. And good hustle to win the ball back. And 
that possession won't lead to anything for the moment. But still plenty of time for Villanova. But Drexel also know there's plenty of time for them to continue scoring too. Yeah, Thomas McIntyre with the take down the alley. Not a bad take at all. Was able to get to seven, eight yards, but just misses the cage. And here's that Villanova 10-man ride. So they they know how to speed these games up, right? They've, again, caused another turnover here. They're not really pushing in transition, but it just seems like the more opportunities you give an offense like Villanova is like that combined with the face-off discrepancy, right? They've won 17 of 24. Just seems like a matter of time before, you know, they put another one on the board here. Certainly, I mean, the Wildcats now going to cut to the inside. Close range effort just missed. That may have tipped off the stick of McGill. But yeah, certainly if McGill was hoping for a quieter 15 minutes, he's uh, going to be sorely mistaken. The best goalie in the CAA going to be put to the test until the very end by this Villanova side. Picata working it from the back, played across. And now another opportunity rolling around up top. Villanova going to hold on to it. Nothing was open that time for Lucchesi. Now they'll bring it all the way back below. Looking for some room. The stick is knocked out of his hand, and Drexel going to get the ball back. Yeah, great slide and takeaway there by Drexel. That's huge, right? After a lot of Villanova calls turnovers, Drexel answers with one of their own. And it's going to be important here for this offense to, to you know, they're going to have to get to 12 or 13. Right again, the, the face-off discrepancy, you know that Villanova is going to get possessions there. So this Drexel offense is, is Got to get flowing here a little bit, get back to what they were doing in the, the first half and even the third quarter. Yeah, and I know the Drexel offense does not want to have the same story of what happened last year against Villanova. They were leading 7-5 to five in the third quarter, a similar game, but with less offensive output, more defensive stops. But Villanova were able to take all the momentum in the late third and fourth quarter, scoring nine unanswered goals to turn a 7-5 scoreline to a 14-7 Wildcats win. Nine unanswered. That's impressive. That yeah, certainly is. But the Dragons hoping that there won't be nine going in in a row without a response this time around. 8.45 left in the game. Long range shot misses, but Drexel is there to back them up. They've only got nine seconds to work with, though. So it'll be a tough play to get a shot on the board. Or even goal number 12. Not a lot of room. Pressure knocks the ball free. And while they play it up close, the clock's going to expire, and Villanova gets the ball back. Great defense there by number five, David Evanchik. Just really being physical up at the island, right? That island area, five yards wide of the goal, five yards above. And I like the way he was just patient, right? He knows that Holy is a right-handed player and just kind of sat on his right hand. But this is what has caused Villanova trouble the whole night, just being sloppy in the middle of the field. Right, that's their 19th turnover compared to Drexel's 13th. So obviously winning faceoffs, but if you turn the ball over a bunch, those stats kind of even themselves out. So yeah, it certainly Drexel's, has. Yeah, Drexel's going possession and getting down to crunch time now. Leading by two, every possession is going to start to count. I mean, the clock is going to become a even more important factor, but. Yeah, I know you were mentioning around halftime, Villanova needed to step it up on defense. They have done that, but it's actually come at a slight cost of a little more sloppy on the attacking end with a few more turnovers and sloppy passes than we were seeing back in the first 30 minutes of play. But now Drexel bring up close. They won't have room to get the shot. Another caused turnover by this Villanova defense. They have shut the Dragons down through the entirety of the first eight minutes of this fourth quarter. And no now they may have a chance in transition. Yeah, they have really stepped their game up. Still looking for an opportunity, but the defense staying in front for now, because even though Villanova have been good on defense, we have seen some great saves from McGill, and they've been able to force some of those turnovers. There's a shot that just deflected. Hard to tell because, again, very tough to tell with the white jersey and stick which one of that get in the way, or maybe it was even the post. We'll see how it's put into the stat sheet. That may have been the 10th save for McGill. Indeed it was. Yeah, I think that hit his lower body somewhere. 
knee, maybe a shin. You talked about it earlier. Those bruises, those scars, they don't hurt when you make positive plays for your team. But it looks like Nova might be man up here. Not quite sure what the call was. Yeah, I didn't notice if there was a flag, but if it is a man up advantage, that's going to be useful for the Wildcats. 6.57 to go. And yeah, it looks like it. They've only got five on the field. And now the Wildcats looking to get a second man up goal. They haven't been clinical at those throughout the start of the year, but they've made some good passing at the moment. Just trying to find that right pass on target. Yeah, I think you got to take a peek inside here. Drexel running a five man rotation. Ball gets loosed after the shot was deflected. Another ranged effort deflected away. Picked up close. And I think a crease, they got a little too close that time. So Drex was able to defend against the opportunity. But that wasn't a bad man up spot. They had some early, they had some shots there. But it's McGill closing the door again with another save. He has been awesome in the second half. He certainly has, although a little bit of bad news for McGill. The stats corrected the previous save, so he's back to nine in total. But yeah, he has been doing a great job to keep Drexel alive as they send that pass all the way down the field. Heads back to the Wildcats, so they can't make a quick little play in transition. Man, for as, as much scoring and, and clean offense as we had in the first half, it is we've come back down to earth here in the second half. And I think it's been the play of, of just tough defenses, right? It's been active sticks. I think they've just had a little bit more pep in their step than the offensive units. And we're going to get an offsides here on Villanova, another penalty. That is going to be unfortunate for them. 6.03 left to go, and every opportunity that Drexel has with this man advantage will not only lead to a potential extension of the lead, but less time for Villanova to get back on the board. They've only got six minutes to find two goals and equalize. So now they'll work it around. Still trying to find the opportunity from deep. Can Putting see a Villanova, lot of Villanova really extending out with their poles up top. Yeah, they're not scared to put pressure up top, even though they are down a man. But they find just enough room inside, and Drexel makes it 12 to 9. And it's Hooley who has completed a hat trick. He now has six points on the game, three goals, and three assists. Hooley taking advantage of kind of the loose ball scramble situation here. Initial pass gets knocked down. You get the defenders kind of out of whack. And Wilson is just like, how did that sneak in? Maybe between his legs or that near side pipe. Great accuracy from Hooley. I mean, who else but Hooley to put Trexel up by three? And I think it was actually just a very small, unnoticeable poke by Tomac. Taking a look at this goal one more time. Played up top. Yeah, just a great goal there. Just, I think it was a little poke from Tomac that opened that opportunity up there, Marcus. Yeah, a little goose back to his teammate Hooli and kind of looking upfield as he shot that. I think it was a little bit of a deceptive shot for Wilson to see and maybe just banked right off his, his legs there as he snuck it in near side. But now we continue play with a 12-9 lead back on lacrosse TV. And if you've only just started tuning in now, well, you've still got a pretty exciting final five minutes to go, and Villanova are looking to increase the pace of play again, bringing it up close. Not enough room to score instantly off the transition, but yeah, they just took a timeout after a very strong Drexel goal, and now convert from a long range effort to bring it back 12 to 10. And if, if Nova wants to get back in this game, as you can see, it's going to be from that defensive unit. Steven Zupacic, I really like his game. He's been active all night, making plays. And he stays on the field here, and he's able to catch and hammer one home. I like the quick release, right? We talked about that earlier from the, the inside crease shot. 
but especially with the pole, he catches that one cradle, and you can see the frustration from Coach Brian Volker at the bottom of your screen taking his hat off. We've got a game on our hands, folks. Yeah, I mean, you're up by three with five minutes to go. A defensive stop could somewhat secure the victory. I mean, it wouldn't because, you know, you still got plenty of time for the Wildcats, but it would allow you to waste even more time on the following attack, but now Villanova returned the game to this two-goal margin, and it's a very dangerous lead because you can definitely score two goals quickly. I mean, Villanova scored three within 90 seconds back in the first quarter. Fakes the long-range shot, brings it in close. Not enough room to wrap it around the net, but he'll continue this possession, 40 seconds to go. And still players trying to get open, but not a lot of room up close. The Dragons doing a good job of marking their attackers and not giving them a lot of space to operate. That's good patience from the Villanova offense here. Going to take the best shot. They play it up top. Time winding down in the shot clock. Just 12 seconds left. Now a little room for a shot. Deflected away. Picked up on the rebound. And also <laughs> goes away. Oh, so close for the Wildcats. I think there was one save on the play by McGill. But the rebound just goes wide. And Drexel are able to hold on with 3.44 left to go. Got to be ready to break this this ride though this Villanova ride's been successful all night and we'll see if Drexel can really put the pressure again but that's going to be a turnover out of play forced out of bounds by the defense and you can tell that Marcus the momentum is squarely with the Wildcats Drexel's hanging in there to, though you know they have McGill they know he's their backbone in cage and Both teams back on the field as we resume. 3.30 to go here in the fourth quarter. Drexel leads Villanova by two. And time winding down. The Wildcats will start a new possession. And Marcus, they have just been in control throughout this fourth quarter. And do you think there will be a chance for Villanova to make the comeback here? Yeah, I mean, that they... Again, they've been winning face-offs. They've been pressing out and kind of controlling the, the tempo, but they haven't been able to solve this Drexel defense, really. They've only got a few more opportunities to do it. Yep. And time is definitely not going to be on their side. If they let Drexel have a prolonged attack, it may kill any opportunity to score those final two goals. They've got 30 seconds to finish up this attack. They want to find a chance into the back of the net played into a sea of dragon defenders that ball gets away but they do have a player behind and they'll have 20 seconds left to go 232 remaining here in the fourth quarter tough handle by mcintyre to even get that shot off up close <laughs> and that is a very nice point blank shot and as you mentioned when it was from three to two we have a game we have an even closer game now 12 to 11. whoa 12 to 112 <laughs> no, it's uh, 12 to 11, and that time a very good close range effort by Matt Licata. He gets on the board for a hat trick. Licata, great move at X. His, his change of direction is phenomenal. He's been kind of knocking on the door all night. He's obviously been able to score three goals, two assists, but 11 shots on the evening. You can just tell how aggressive he is as an X attackman. He's got the keys to this Villanova offense certainly does and will the dragons be able to win with this face off still loose everyone falling over getting the ball and drexel come up with it and you have to say with two minutes to go that is one of the most important face offs of the night and now it allows the dragons to start to work this shot clock they've got 70 seconds to kill villanova want to force a turnover before then but all drexel need to do is hold on because the game clock is not too far away from that 60 seconds. Yep, you're going to want to run this down. You're going to try to try to get a shot. Obviously, if you score, you give yourself a really nice buffer, but just don't want to get 
beat in transition. Or give Villanova any easy opportunities to score. Oh. And they may have wow. just committed a pretty bad turnover. That Wildcats defense has just been on fire. And now they're going to send it all the way back forward. We've got 80 seconds to play. And this could be an incredible opportunity for the Wildcats to equalize the game. Here they go, moving it down the left side. They've got 60 seconds on the shot clock. Eight seconds is the differential. And a timeout's going to be called for the Wildcats. They want to talk it over. One minute, eight seconds left, and Villanova have done what they've needed to make this a closed game. And Marcus, big timeout here. What do you think the Wildcats were looking to talk about just as they set up this last possession? Yeah, I mean, you imagine the ball's going to be in Lakata's stick, right? Maybe it's a, a big little pick for him. Um, they've had success with Michener cutting. So look for number 10 to get involved somehow. And that is a massive save from McGill up close. Raymond had kept it. He may have had an opportunity out wide as the ball is going to go back to Villanova. Drexel had a chance to bring it up the field. But again, that Wildcat defense forces yet another turnover. And it's going to prompt another timeout. And I mean, what are your thoughts on that play? You get the good save from McGill. If you could get it up the field, you force Villanova to be super aggressive so you can't run down the clock, but you can't even escape as the ball gets loose, and now you lose the ball again. Yeah, Raymond with with not a terrible take. Um, I'm sure maybe the Villanova coaching staff would like to see some more passing and, and some more guys involved, but yeah, again, the, the pressure of, of this Villanova ride has you know, caused some turnovers, and I'm sure McGill would like to have that pass back for sure. He may have a chance to make another pass if he can convert another save. There won't be a game clock or a shot clock needed for these final possessions. 49 seconds left to go. And it's going to be with the Wildcats. This defense needs to hold strong just a little bit longer. And I think this time they're now going to want to find it into the stick of Lakata. Get it in his hands, let him cook. They may even be able to find Missioner and Real throughout this possession too. They'll start it with an, uh, resuming the play on the right side. And the most four, tensed 49 seconds. Look, yeah, it looks like right. Missioner's gonna cut here, double seal. Play it up top is Drake did a, Drexel did a great job of just shutting down right in front of the net. But can they keep things closed? Not able to make a play from behind. Look to get past his defender. There's a screen to give him some space. And the clock continues to wind down. Played in the back. Played up top. Played out left. Good passing to find some players. And now 11 seconds to take that final shot. And it's gonna <laughs> find the net. At the death with nine to go. He beats him on one of the hardest shots to take right at the near post. He bounces it to the far post with just a sliver of room. McGill would have been able to seal the deal if that shot was saved, but no, it was not. And I've just got to give so much credit to Villanova for their patience on this possession. It's been one of their best, probably the entire game. Multiple passes, right? Guys moving the ball through X to the wing. We're probably going to have a stalemate here on this face-off as we head into overtime. Wow, what a huge goal by Tyler Bowes. And I mean, that is the way you want to end the fourth quarter with that last second chance. 12 to 12, we were just 10 seconds away from Drexel surviving, but instead we'll head to overtime and yeah, I mean, we'll just stick around really quickly. We've got some second half highlights coming in on the way, but what a performance. I mean, Villanova, 51 shots, and they finally, on that 51 attempt, got goal number 12 to level the game back up. Crazy, and again, just ball movement, patience, and an incredible take. 
And here are some of the first half highlights with Drexel getting started on the scoring. But Villanova was quick to respond. Yeah, definitely the second half has been slower in terms of scoring. Uh, Villanova able to put home four in the fourth quarter to send this thing to overtime. This was Tomac down the alley. And again, Drexel's been in control of this game really since the start. But we're not at 12. Now anything can happen. Drexel's offense gone a little bit cold in the second half, just three goals. And mainly was that fourth quarter that just slowed down the offense. And they weren't able to find the opportunities. The Wildcats were forcing turnovers and it allowed these comebacks with these four goals they scored right here as we're seeing them again. Yeah. And it was that holy goal on that man up where you were like, okay, it's 12 to nine. Drexel's probably got this in the bag, but Villanova just hung, they hung tough. They get a long pole goal in transition. Lakata's doing his thing back in X. And we were able to get this to tie it up. Three straight goals for Villanova. And you've got to think they have the momentum, right? Going into overtime. They've been facing off well, winning 20 out of 28, but we'll see who takes this one home. So will it be the 21st for Villanova or the 9th for Drexel? It's going to go to the Dragons. And they love to get on the board to start overtime quickly. And that's going to lead to a quick timeout. And that was an important faceoff to win. Villanova have been so strong the entire time on the faceoffs that now Drexel may be able to get some momentum back as we begin that overtime period. But... Yeah, I mean, just incredible finale to the game, but we've still got a little bit of action to go. I mean, there's a reason this was the game of the week. It is not disappointed. <laughs> not disappointed whatsoever. We love free lacrosse here on Lacrosse TV. My dinner plans will have to wait, which is all good. And Same we're gonna see what We'll see what Drexel has drawn up, Coach Boyle, out of this timeout. You know, Tomac's been, been the hot hand for them. Four goals, two assists. Hooli also chipping in with three and three. So maybe a combination from them. And then you can't forget about Semple off ball, right? I'm sure Villanova is probably keying in on him on the crease. You don't want to slide off him. So I imagine it'll be one of those three guys that has a hand in, in this final hole here. Maybe, maybe you go back to that opener from the first uh, possession, which was... Actually, um, was number 42, Gavin Kelly sweeping and a feed to Semple. Maybe just to mix it up. Kelly with two assists on the evening. Yeah, I mean, I'm a little surprised that Kelly hasn't been as active in the game. He was the team leader with 11 points entering today's match. He has provided two assists, but only two points compared to some of the efforts of his teammates. But maybe he gets that third point to seal the deal for Drexel. They're gonna continue here in the first period of overtime. It's gonna be Kelly starting us off from up top, looking for a little space. And that is gonna be forced Ooh. away. A crucial play there, but it's gonna stay with Drexel. And I know their bench may not be super happy that they didn't get the ball back on that call. There are those active long sticks for Villanova. Now the Dragons playing it with the attack. This is the first time they've really been able to settle down on offense since earlier in the fourth quarter because that Villanova defense has just been so strong, but maybe the overtime period has awoken the Dragons just a little bit. Falls, but holds on to the ball, and they still work it around. They've got 33, 32 seconds to go on the shot clock. The ball dropped, but Kelly picked it back up. Shot from distance, saved a crucial effort, and the Wildcats get the ball back. And now they have to deal with the Dragons' pressure, and they will for the moment. Wilson keeping the game alive. Anthony Wilson with his biggest save of the night in overtime. Villanova is probably going to take a timeout, I'm guessing, here. Or if they want to maybe play some sub games. They might. They're keeping it slow to start this attack. They know they've got time on the shot clock. Yeah, I like, I like saving the timeout. Use it for when you need it, right? You can get your guys on here. If you get out of whack, you can always call a timeout, but 
sometimes it's hard to come out of those timeouts and run set plays and instead of just playing and freestyling. Yeah, just let the game come to you rather than trying to regain the tempo. And the Wildcats, well, they're still able to get regain the tempo as they continue this attack. Nothing's open yet for Lakata, but obviously he's the guy you want, makes a cut. The pass won't find a target up top, and it's going to be one with Wilson. Definitely an uh, important ball to win, but he was able to get his stick in front of everyone else's, and the Dragons will bring it back forward. Less than two minutes left in this first quarter of overtime, but obviously the time's not important. Scoring the goal is more important in this great stage hustle, of the game. Great hustle by number 44, Luke Raymond, to get back in the hole from Villanova there. Probably won't show up on the stat sheet, but great hustle. Playing it around, looking for a chance right here. He's found a little bit of space, but just waits for another attacker to move up forward. They've got 35 seconds to play with on the shot clock. Now once again, looking for the attack from behind. Maybe an inverted play. Couple runs forward. A few defenders interrupting the attack, and it's going to fall back to Villanova. Oh, got a trailer. Up. See the middle. Now you take the timeout, right? Now you take the timeout. They're going to hold on to it, it looks like. And they're just going to let the clock continue to wind down. And actually, no, they will go for the timeout here with 48.2 seconds to go. But man, oh man, these defenses providing some big stops. I mean, let's look back just a minute ago, Marcus. Wilson with the most important save of the game. I mean, Wilson, huge. Yeah, he's only had seven on the entire day. And this one was big. Villanova, again, doing what they do defensively, scrambling, putting the ball on the ground. But sometimes in those situations, you can get overextended, and that's kind of what happened on that possession. Drexel was able to get a nice hands-free shot, but Wilson shut the door. And then down the other end, you get Lakata matched up on a short stick. Makes a great move, but a nice timely slide from Drexel was able to put the ball on the ground. So. You know, it's certainly with some good defense just to slow them down. And taking a look at some of the stats, Villanova, 23 shots on goal on 51 in total. Drexel, 20 less shots, but they've only had four less shots on goal. And the question will be, will the next shot be the one that finds the back of the net? Can McGill do what Wilson did and make a huge stop against the Wildcats? They've got 48 seconds to play with as they come out of the timeout. And it is good that they were able to save it and use it here with the pressure building time winding down in this first period over, over, uh, wow, I cannot talk right now, over time. <laughs> even, uh, even we're getting a little uh, fatigued here as we push into the late minutes of overtime here. Yeah, and for us, it's just maybe getting tongue-tied for the players. It's going to be a stamina issue. They've got to will themselves to find the energy. Time resumes. The play is resumed. 40 seconds left. And they're holding, just waiting for that opportunity to open. With Chessy with the ball, he's guarded by Kamar. And again, yeah. still waiting. Yep, not giving Drexel a chance at the other end. Smart. But you obviously want to have enough time to run your offense, so here they go. 20 seconds left. This is the second most important 20-second period of the game. The most important was back in the fourth quarter when they found the equalizer. And now with nine seconds left, they may have a chance for one final shot. Not a lot of room. Three seconds to go. Two seconds to go. Ball gets away. And in the first four minutes of overtime, no one has found the winner. And I will say, Marcus, these two teams are going to have a very tense two-minute break before they get back on the field. Uh, yes, these offenses have run out of juice. Defenses have locked in. And we've got a two-minute break, and we're right back at it. Again, the, the statistics say that Villanova is likely to win this next faceoff. So we'll see what happens, though. Anything can happen in overtime, as you know. Yeah, they've had 20 of 29 face-offs. This 30th face-off will probably be the most important to see who can really get the advantage. But I know, Marcus, you've played 
uh, throughout your career, you've coached throughout your career. What are the emotions that are really throwing through the players as they get set for now a second overtime period? Yeah, it's it's you got to just control your breathing, right? You've, you've got to just be present. You can't be thinking about what the final score is going to be or am I going to be the hero? Am I going to make the play? You've got to just do your job. You've got to lock in and you can't let the kind of high emotions of the game affect you know what you do right you can't go out of control sliding to a guy right you've got to be under control offensively you want to move the ball you've got to move your feet all those little details we spoke about earlier is the reason why you train you know in in the middle of august in the, in the summer heat are for moments like this and yeah, from the summer heat of august to the chilly evenings of march and both teams actually really ready to go. They only took 90 seconds for that break. Another overtime period. We're tied at 12. This is the first game that Villanova's had in overtime. Drexel had one to open the year against UMBC. They went on to win 11 to 10. And that'll be Villanova starting us off after winning their 21st faceoff. Big faceoff win there. It actually looked like they were going to call timeout as they were slowing it down, but no, they were just giving more than enough time for their attackers to move back on offense. And here they go back into that attacking third of the field, looking to find that crucial goal. Played back up top. They've got some space to work with. And time will continue to wind down on the shot clock. Makes a move to the inside. Pass down low. Played in close. And Villanova have completed the comeback to win 13-12. A close range effort. Beats McGill. Wow. What a game and what a comeback win for Villanova. A historic matchup between teams that have played 50 matches against each other i mean they put on a clinic this time absolutely amazing matchup to see and even the drexel fans here they have to be satisfied but just a bit disappointed with how this game has ended it was so much fun here at vitus field but it's villanova just securing the victory here in overtime mcintyre on the board with his first goal and second point to win the game Wow, first goal of the evening for McIntyre. An incredible take. I like the way that he caught the ball, and you could just tell it put his foot in the ground, said, I'm going to the rack here. And a huge shot coming up that righty wing. Credit to Villanova, man. They hung in there. It was not pretty by any means. But the faceoff X becomes the difference. Coppola with 19 wins on 27 faceoffs. That's huge get his team the ball in that double overtime period and then the offensive players are able to do the rest.